Look at that angle. That is a beautiful angle. And this, this thing just sucks. So if I want to be like going that way from this angle, normally I have like a straight right there and I could like match it up and then this would just be the bend and then this would be straight. The rest of the bend is not going to be on the next bend. Isaiah is actually making his own life a little bit more complicated than even I was thinking. <laughs> let me just, let me just narrate the piece that he's planning right here. You correct me if I'm wrong on any of these. Yeah, he, he wants it to come up at an angle like that. He's also taking into account the fact that he needs to get behind it to weld. Yeah. So he's got it up on an angle, out on an angle, he wants to bring it in mm -hmm. to get proximity to all that. And then that's, that's bad because it's going to go into the engine. So it's got to come back beautifully and then come down. Yeah, and then come down. Pretty fascinating stuff. Good, good luck, Isaiah. Today has been one hell of a productive day at the computer. I've spent all day working on getting fittings for the turbo, oil lines in and out. They're custom for this car, as well as for the front cover, M22. Who would have thought metric bolts on the front there? I've got to work on a lot to make up for lost time. I'm going to take the bell housing off of this engine and then put it onto this one. I had no luck finding a turbo two bell housing. I have one on the Corvette, but I'm not, I'm just not gonna mess with it. And then I'll take the dummy transmission and put it onto there. I have to take the bushings off of this one, put it onto that one. And then now we'll have that engine in the correct spot. That gets us ready to make engine melts. This belt has been a complete pain in the ass. I have learned so much about high torque drive belts. I wish I could share it all with the world. 8M means eight millimeters per cog. But funny enough, 920 means 920 millimeters. You can subtract the two, take a, whatever, do some sort of math, and you figure out how many teeth are in this. That means the next largest size is 928, 936, and so on. And guess what I did earlier? I went and ordered all of those to try and figure out what we can do to make the belt work. I'll just take this, that battery completely apart. Now I have to take the adapter back off of the good one. Thankfully there's nothing in the transmission or this would be double painful. Fuck off. One bushing. That's it so far. I dropped this. Wow, that was really picking up the whole car. I gotta tighten that front cover, but there we basically have the engine back in its correct spot. Now there we go. That's the engine in the correct spot. That gives me a chance for this red rocket. It's not even red, what am I talking about? for this to fit without any sort of modification. I just kind of made peace with the fact that this was probably going to get cut up, whether it was the car, the piece, the transmission, something, something was gonna get cut. Uh, that looks pretty sick, honestly. Now it's time to put these fake oil pan brackets into place and then see where the engine mounts will end up. Very interesting. Every single one of these are gonna be a challenge. This one's gonna be weird because of all the scavenging lines from the pan to the tank. This one's gonna be weird because, well, <laughs> you can't even see it all because of the all-wheel drive system. The one back here is gonna be weird because of the all-wheel drive system. Uh, this one actually might be the easiest one. It's closest to the frame and there's no real reason to get in its way. There you go. The easiest one by far. Now that the engine is in place, I'm gonna take a break from that task and focus on taking this down. Both sides need the exact same treatment. Hilariously, that's actually pretty close. For those of you guys that mentioned that that bolt head was hitting the flange, it wasn't. I've seen that before. It's, it actually hits on the inside here where it's supposed to.
Well, it may not hit on the top one, it's now going to hit on the bottom ones. The correct solution ultimately is to change how this mounts to this upright. You might take down the bolt heads, add another mounting point down here to keep it safe. Taking the head of the bolts down was a four in the morning idea. I decided quickly after I turned off the camera, no, let's actually get shorter bolts. Those are very tall headed Allen bolts and you can get normal standard bolts. Yeah, that turned out pretty decent. I just spent the last hour staring at all of the oil lines, figuring out if they would hit the frame or not. I am going to call it quits for tonight. This will be one video. I'm not gonna release it tomorrow, so I'm gonna continue tomorrow's content in only because it's just not enough. There's a, I'm talking a lot in the video. I'm gonna cut all of that out like I am now. So we're gonna space it a day. You won't know this until you see the video two days from now. I'm sorry. I can only do so much and I've worked on cleaning this beautiful shop to pass an insurance inspection. The insurance guy, as soon as he walked in, his eyes fixated to this thermonuclear device and just stared at it. So you know what I did to kind of uh, switch it up a little bit? I know I didn't have Isaiah show some leg. I had the Diablo show some leg because nobody can resist that. That, that gets your attention and it keeps you focused on things that aren't explosive. We've got a lot on the plate for the rest of the video and probably the title of the video will reflect whatever we're about to do. Will's first billet. Will's first billet, Isaiah Duran. <laughs> <laughs> there are other Isaiah Durans out there. Some of them in Australia, some of them in New Zealand, but this is the world's first billet, <laughs> Isaiah. Another, um, not unboxing, what do they call this? Oh, unbagging. Unbagging? Yeah. Oh, no, these are sexy radiator though. These are 20 AN fittings. Do you want to explain what we're doing right now? Oh. Wait, me? Well, we're making a fan shroud. Yes, yes, uh, a, a, a fan shroud, yeah. yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. Yeah, a fan shroud. We're making a fan, a billet fan shroud. <laughs> <laughs> You know you're supposed to leave your protection on. That's you only if you don't want to have kids. <laughs> this is rubber. I always want to put the rubber on. It's really restrictive, but you know, it gets effective. He's about to cut these brackets off so that way we can then mount this to the correct spot. That was sick. It like spin locks into place. Whoa. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is our very first cut a chromoly piece off of the chassis. We're gonna have to replate that. This is just a massive move forward because that piece right there was holding up the body. Is that thicker than 095? That looks thicker than 095, but I, what do I know? Yeah, 120, that's good. You don't know your own car, Rob? I don't know my own car. If somebody's like, oh yeah, it's 120 wall, I'd be like, cool, yeah. Nice, cool. nice, 120 feet long, cool. <laughs> just just hold right there, like out, out a little bit more. Yeah, there, there, there you go, just stay right there. You don't want people distract you, you. When I'm talking, you stay still so that we know you don't distract me. So stay perfectly still. Anyway, so in the background, I'm giving him great advice for running a YouTube channel. 120 wall is 0.12 inches thick, whereas the rest of the stuff we have is 0 0.095. So you hear 095. That's exactly what that means. We're gonna be putting a lot of pressure on those pieces. You could jack the car up from those, but those are not the core of the car. The core of the car is beefy, and that is a very good thing. The reason that area matters so much is looking at it, the wheel transfers the energy to the upper mount where the cantilever pivots, and then back down to the shock down there. Both of those spaces take a lot of the weight or the force of the vehicle. Those need to be rigid. Creative solutions that will not end up on the car. Will not end up on the car. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you have no control over this. I'm, I'm gonna stand by the car night and day until that gets capped off. You've been doing that. <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> they just want a wasted piece of metal because I'm a dumbass. I gotta yell, right? So it's just a wasted. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy told me he's like yeah i met uh, youtubers and they always yell at me the rule of thumb there is like right now the microphone is not picking my voice up loud it's a directional microphone about to weld in uh, the billet pieces you see As we try and figure out some of the issues, this is exactly why we needed to do this first. The radiator is beautifully 20 AN. It's an inch and a quarter flow through that. The front of the motor is roughly inch and a quarter in diameter if you take into account all the weird shapes. 60 AN is smaller than that. Our goal is to think for the future and get as much flow in and out of that motor, especially when we go to upgrade it to have two ends to try and prevent the back of the motor from getting too hot. That poses a challenge when it comes to the lines up at the front. And I'll be honest, the inadequately sized water pump, which has been a concern of mine from the beginning, necks down all the way to 16 AN. This is exactly, that thing's aluminum? Cutting it back and then putting it like that. So we save, but yeah, definitely you save at least that size. We're gonna call it quits for the night for this video because I've already got 65 gigs of footage from yesterday today to go through. So we've got a lot in, the, as you've seen, this is a massive video. We're hauling ass. Tomorrow's video is gonna be a continuation from getting the water system figured out and then continuing to put tube in the car. It's already begun. That is just so cool. We've got 20 days left. What's the worst that can happen?